Let's talk about how Exchange Online Protection and Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection can protect you against advanced threats that are email-based. Let's take a look. So at a high level, this is the architecture that we're dealing with here across four different categories. So let's dive into each one. Starting with Edge, we're gonna have network throttling. This protects Office 365 infrastructure and customers from denial of service attacks by limiting the number of messages that can be submitted by a specific set of infrastructure. Next, we have IP reputation throttling. And this is gonna block messaging being sent from known bad connecting IP addresses. If a specific IP sends a large number of messages in a short period of time, it'll be throttled. Domain reputation will block any messages at the edge from being sent from a bad domain. Directory-based edge filtering blocks attempts to harvest an organization's directory information through SMTP. Backscatter detection prevents an organization from being attacked through invalid NDRs. Next, let's take a look at sender intelligence. And these features are critical for catching a great deal of spam, bulk email, and unauthorized spoofing, and is important in phishing detection. And most of these features are gonna be configurable. So SPF enforces rejecting email based on which IPs are allowed to send mail to organizations on behalf as defined in their DNS record. DKIM provides an encrypted signature that authenticates the sender. DMARC allows the sender to mark their domain as requiring SPF and DKIM, ensuring alignment between these two technologies. Intra spoof intelligence detects and blocks spoof attempts from a domain within the organization. Cross domain spoof intelligence detects and blocks spoof attempts from a domain outside the organization. Bulk filtering provides a confidence level indicating whether or not the message was sent from a bulk sender. Customers can use the bulk slider and the anti-spam policy to decide what level of bulk to treat as spam. Mailbox intelligence, which one of my favorite features, uses each user's communication graph to detect when the sender appears to be someone who's usually communicating with them, but in reality isn't. User impersonation allows an admin to provide a list of high value targets that are likely to be impersonated within the organization. If a mail arrives with a sender with the same name but a different address, the recipient is warned. Domain impersonation detects domains that are similar to the recipient's domain, attempting to look like an internal domain. Let's talk about content filtering next. So transport rules are also known as ETRs, allow an admin to perform a wide range of complex action when an equally wide range of conditions are met for any given message. Antivirus engines, so Microsoft antivirus engines and multiple other antivirus engines are used to detect all known malware in attachments. Type blocking is the AV engines are also used to true type all attachments so that type blocking can block all attachments of the types the admin specifies, by, like by file extension. Whenever ATP detects a malicious attachment, the file's hash and a hash of its active content are added to EOP reputation. Attachment reputation blocking will then block that file across all of Office 365 and on endpoints throughout Microsoft Antivirus Cloud calls. Heuristic clustering can determine that a file is suspicious based on delivery heuristics. So when a suspicious attachment is found, the entire campaign is paused and the file is sandboxed. If it is found to be malicious, the entire campaign is blocked. Machine learning models act on the header, body content, and URLs of a message to detect phishing attempts. URL reputation blocking is used from URL sandboxing as well as URL reputation blocking from third-party feeds to block any message with a malicious URL. Content heuristics can detect suspicious messages based on structure and word frequency within the body of the message using machine learning models. Safe attachments sandboxes every attachment for ATP customers using dynamic analysis to detect never before seen threats like zero days. Linked content detonation treats every URL linking to a file in an email 
as an attachment asynchronously sandbox in the file at the time of delivery. When the upstream anti-fish tech finds a message or URL to be suspicious, URL detonation sandboxes the URLs and the message at the time of delivery. So now let's talk about post-delivery protection. When a URL that points to a file is clicked on post-delivery, linked content detonation displays a warning page until sandboxing of the file is complete and the URL is found to be safe. Safe links is Office 365 ATP's time of click protection. Every URL in each message is wrapped to a point of SafeLink servers. When the URL is clicked, it is checked against the latest reputation before the user is redirected to the target site and the URL is asynchronously sandboxed to update the reputation. Zero Hour Auto Purge can find and junk any message with it an attachment or a URL that is found to be malicious after the message has been delivered. And one of my other favorites here is SafeLinks for Office Clients offers the same SafeLinks time of click protection natively inside Office Clients like Word, PowerPoint, Excel. So let me wrap up by saying this is the overall architecture of Exchange Online Protection and Office 365 Advanced Threat Protection. Special thanks to the engineering teams behind this. Great job, everybody. And hopefully this gives you an idea of how these two products come together to better protect you. So what I encourage you to do next is go out there, read more. I'll put some links in the video description to the documentation. And if there's any questions, let me know on LinkedIn and Twitter, and we'll get those answered. All right, everybody, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.